Hello and welcome to the Barbarian Meets Coding vlog. Today we're going to talk about Vim. We're going to continue our Exploring Vim series where we will look at how to set up your Vim to be more awesome at Vim. Awesome! 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 One of the core things about Vim is that One of the core things about Vim is how easy it is to configure it. You will see as you get more accustomed and more into the Vim culture that every Vim user, Power Vim user, has their own Vimrc file where they configure Vim to their heart's desire. And this is like a Zen garden where you just trim and prune and fix it little by little and go adapting it to your workflow. You learn more things about Vim, you become more proficient, you think about how you work editing code and slowly you build up that VMRC, that configuration file to make yourself more effective. So throughout this series, we're gonna see a lot of things that you can do with Vim and, and as you go becoming more proficient and learning new features, we will see how we can customize Vim to make those features more usable, uh, easier to type, easier to reuse. So it's useful to take some time in the beginning to just learn the very basics, the four or five things you need to know to learn how to configure Vim and we will be using those throughout the next videos of this series uh, as we need them. Well, configuring might sound boring at first but think about it as you have this weapon that is Vim yeah! and you're gonna make it more awesome and more adapted to yourself and this is what you're gonna learn in this video. So let's get started. Configure the Okay, so here we are in the terminal. So we're gonna just open a Vim like this, boom. And now let's say, so this is, let's say, let's see. So this is just the welcoming um, window in uh, Vim. And now let's say that we want to configure something. We want to configure our Vim. How do we do that? Okay, so the way that we do that, the way that we configure Vim is using what it's known as X commands. Uh, what is an X command? An X command is any command that you type by using colon and you see how now I'm down here typing stuff. So colon and a command. This is what X commands are. So let's say that I want to change the color scheme of Vim. So I can do color scheme and I can change the color to something else like Elf Lord. And you can see that I have a horrible uh, color scheme here, okay? Now let's say that I want to change the color scheme to something else. You can see how Vim has tab completion for this thing. So if I say co, co, and now I press on tab, I can see a bunch of options. And you can see how uh, as you go type in more characters and press on tab, the uh, selections are less. So let's say that I want to go to color scheme again, and I do tab, and I can see these are all the themes that I have installed in this computer. So now let's go and say Neodark, that was the one I had before, and now I have some better color scheme again. So things that you need to learn. Cool, tab completion helps you. Uh, you don't need to type uh, complete commands. You can say yes, colo, uh, shorthand. So again, let's go to Elf Lord again. Well, let's do distinguished. So that works as well. I don't need to type color scheme, I can do color. Uh, very useful for all of the different X commands. L let's summarize it. So the way that we configure Vim is using X commands. Uh, that's awesome. But you don't want to have to open Vim and type all the commands that you need to configure your Vim once. So one thing that you can use, one thing that you can do, is to gather all your configurations inside what it's called a VimRC or Vim configuration file. Uh, how do we get there? So if we do edit or E, you know, again, an X command with the shorthand, and then you use dollar my vimrc, this is a special variable that contains the uh, address or the path of your vimrc. You type this, and now here I am uh, in my vimrc. If you haven't used vim before, probably this file will be empty, uh, but otherwise, this is where you put your configurations. Uh, so as I go uh, scrolling down, you can see that I have a ton of configurations. 
but you can see these are x command so these are x commands so for instance let's let's see you can see here the file type uh, command here it's typed without the column but if I do column file type you can see that it's here so this is just the same thing they are x commands but they are just put inside a file but now uh, you may want to to know what do these different settings do one way that you can do that is by using the help Beam has amazing help that gives you a ton of information about the different settings and other things you can do within Beam. How do you get to the help? Just type another X command. You do uh, colon H, help or H, and then use, let's say that we say file type. We type that, and you can see how now we are in the help for file type. And here you can see this is the actual setting, and it says you to enable file type detection using command in your Beam or C, and here you can find all the information that you need. Uh, for this particular setting. Another way to find uh, the help for a particular um, setting is to use the capital letter K, so uppercase K, and then they use something that is called a keyword search in BIM, and it gives and it sends you directly to to the um, to the help as well. So we say uh, that again, uppercase K, you go keyword search and you go inside the help. Uh, also super helpful if you want to learn more about BeamRC, you get used to help BeamRC. And here you have information for the BeamRC Beam configuration file. So this is the basics of uh, configuring things in Beam. But how do you know what is a good configuration? Okay, so this is something that will organically develop as you get more accustomed with Beam. But one great way to get inspired is by uh, taking a look at different people's uh, beam receives. This is, for instance, uh, a minimal beam that you can use. This is beam sensible. It's like some minimum set of configurations that you can use to get started with beam. And then all of the plugin authors, people that are like using beam, usually have their dot .files, uh, beamrc and such, configuration, uh, available on GitHub. So for instance, Tim Pope is very, a very prolific author. You can find his beamrc just by searching for files, and then you can see that here it is his alt files, and here you can typically, you know, it has a lot of different things, but you can go and look for Beamer C here, and this is his Beamer C, and here you can look at the commands that he's using, the plugins, and this gives you like an idea of, of some good settings that you can use in your own Beam file. Uh, Shogo is another uh, popular author of plugins uh, here he's a little bit more involved but if you go to um, Veeam RC uh, here he has his Veeam RC and he loads different configurations depending on uh, on the environment but for instance we can look at the mappings go to the mappings and here you have his mappings so here you can get an inspiration of how uh, this author of plugins has configured his themes to be more effective. So within with GitHub or uh, Google search, you can just type the name of the plugin author and dot .files or vmrc and you will probably find it. Another interesting resource that you can take a look at is Beam Bootstrap. So you go here and so here you can generate a vmrc by selecting the languages that you typically use uh, in development. So for instance, let's say that I want to say JavaScript and HTML and then you just go ahead, select whether I want to use Veeam or NeoVeeam, generate, generate sample Veeam or C for you. And then you can see here they're using the Veeam flag as the plugin manager, and there's a bunch of plugins that you can get inspiration from, uh, different um, settings, and then you can see that there is uh, more visual settings, and then uh, commands and uh, mappings and uh, all the stuff. So this is great to, to, to get inspiration when you're starting out. Plugins not always have the most descriptive names. So if you find some plugins that you're interested in and you want to find out more about what they do, beamawesome.com is a great resource to find more information about plugins. Here you will be able to find most of the Beam plugins available today with descriptions uh, and popularity metrics like uh, users and stars. Up next in the series, we're going to look about more configuration stuff. We will continue with uh, mappings, one of the most important things that you need to know about configuring your Veeam. 
Then we will continue looking at plugins, how you can install plugins in your Beam setup. And finally, we'll move on into more Beam awesomeness, actually editing, uh, moving around, how you can become more effective using Beam. Thank you for listening. Bye. And uh, don't be an asshole to other people. Be kind. Smile. Hug people. Be good. And winter is coming. So, hug more. Bloopers! At first, this might sound fun, but the. Welcome to the Barbarian Meets Coding Vlog. Welcome to the Barbarian Meets Hello and welcome. I'm configuring it. That's what you want.